Welcome to the Fishes of Oklahoma presentation. Today we will look at a selection of the nearly 175 species of fish that can be found in Oklahoma's lakes, streams, rivers, and ponds. We will begin by going over how each fish will be presented today. Both the common and scientific names will be at the top. A distribution map made using 30 years of fish collection data from the Oklahoma Conservation Commission will also be featured. Several photos of the fish will be presented. It is important to remember that while we point out several features used in identification, most individual fish will not have each of these features displayed beautifully for you to identify. It is important to know several different features to look for when identifying fish. Also, when appropriate, we will point out the difference between a breeding male and female. Fish are often sexually dimorphic, but some only seasonally, so it is important to not rely heavily on breeding coloration for identification. The first fish we will look at is the bluegill, one of the most commonly found in Oklahoma. You can see its wide distribution in the featured map. Bluegills can be sexually dimorphic, but they do have female mimics, so be careful not to diagnose sex based on size or coloration. Bluegills have relatively small mouths as they opportunistically feed on insects, larval insects, small crustaceans, and worms. A dark colored opercle flap is generally visible, but size may vary. Regardless of size or sex, all bluegills should display a dark spot on the soft dorsal fin, and also a long pointed pectoral fin. Many individuals will display vertical bars that slightly resemble DNA helix. Some may be more distinct than others. Bluegills can be found in lakes, streams, rivers, and ponds. Next up is the green sunfish. This fish has a torpedo-shaped body, which is more similar to that of the black bass than it is its fellow lipomids. Green sunfish also have large mouths like bass, allowing them to eat a variety of foods, including insects, crayfish, and even small fish. Similar to the bluegill, green sunfish also have a dark spot on the soft dorsal fin. Note the spot's prominence when comparing the top and bottom photos. The pectoral fin on green sunfish is short and rounded. While coloration varies, the almost iridescent blue-green worm tracks can usually be found on the cheeks of these fish. Adults, and more specifically breeding males, will often have bright orange fin margins. Some may also be outlined in white. As a fish that is quite tolerant of pollution and habitat degradation, green sunfish can be found across the state in a variety of waters. The long-ear sunfish may be one of the most varied when it comes to coloration. The beautiful bright greens, blues, and oranges can present differently depending on water clarity, as it is with most fishes, but also on the watershed in which it was found. Named for the elongated opercle flap, the long-ear sunfish will almost always display this characteristic but it will be exaggerated in breeding males. This mostly carnivorous fish has a small mouth. long ear sunfish also have short, rounded pectoral fins, similar to that of the green sunfish. Like both the bluegill and green sunfish, long ear sunfish are widely distributed in Oklahoma, but are found more abundantly in streams and rivers than in lakes and ponds.
Next is the orange spotted sunfish, the smallest of the Lipomus sunfish. Similar to the long ear, they too have an elongated opercle flap. However, it is not as exaggerated and often outlined in white. As its name implies, the orange spotted sunfish does indeed have orange spots on the body. They also have a relatively large mouth for consuming insects and other invertebrates. One of the more unique features of this fish is its red or orange colored eye. Being very tolerant of both pollution and habitat degradation, orange spotted sunfish can be found in a wide distribution. However, they do prefer stream habitats. Red ear sunfish are one of the more bland sunfish, with the orange to red spot on the opercle flap being the only brightly colored part of this fish. Unlike similar species, the opercle flap is not greatly elongated. However, similar to the bluegill, red ear sunfish have a long pointed pectoral fin. Overall, the fish is an olive green to gold color along the sides with a light or even yellow to orange colored belly. Red ear are often referred to as shellcracker due to their diet of mostly snails, clams, mussels, and crayfish. Due to this specific diet, they are not as widely distributed as some of the other sunfish. We will now move into the black bass. While the previous sunfish are game fish, none are more sought after than the black bass. We will begin with the largemouth. This fish is named for its large mouth that when closed extends behind the eye. When distinguishing between bass species, we often look to the area between the spinous and soft dorsal fins. In largemouth bass, the notch between is very deep and can make it look like the fins are almost unconnected. The next feature is a dark lateral band. This can be somewhat unreliable as some individuals tend to be quite bland. Large mouths will often have irregular dark spots below this lateral band. Largemouth bass have a wide distribution in Oklahoma and can be found in lakes, streams, rivers, and ponds. The next black bass is the spotted bass. These can often be difficult to distinguish from the largemouth bass. While the mouth of this fish is still quite large, when closed, it does not extend beyond the eye. You should be able to feel a small tooth patch on the tongue of the spotted bass. And when looking between the dorsal fins, the notch should be shallow. While also featuring a lateral band, this one tends to be more blotchy and end in a caudal spot. The dark spots below the lateral band should be in a uniform horizontal rose, hence the name spotted bass. Spotted bass are also not as widely distributed in Oklahoma as largemouth bass. The final black bass is the smallmouth bass. As its name implies, this fish has a smaller mouth that does not extend beyond the eye when closed. The notch between the dorsal fins is also shallow, similar to the spotted bass. Smallmouth bass are generally more green in color with vertical barring on the sides. You can also often see dark colored bars on the cheek. Smallmouth bass are more sensitive to pollution and habitat degradation. Thusly, they have a smaller statewide distribution. Smallmouth bass prefer large, clear water lakes and cool streams with clear water and gravel substrate. As we move on in the Centrarchidae family, I will note that all of the fish we have looked at up to this point 
have featured three spines in their anal fin, which sets them apart from another group in this family. That other group is crappies. These fish have six anal spines, setting them apart from the others in the Centrarchidae family. Crappie also have small heads with large mouths. First, we will look at the white crappie. Like the bass, these are sought after game fish. The white crappie features five or six dorsal spines. This is probably the most important feature to remember. White crappie are a silvery fish that usually feature faint vertical bars on the side. White crappie are generally tolerant and have a wide distribution in Oklahoma. The black crappie is very similar to the white crappie, and in certain environments, it can be difficult to distinguish the two. Like white crappie, black crappie also feature a spine on the operculum. The black crappie features seven or eight dorsal spines, and again, this is the most important feature to remember. Black crappie can be silver to olive in color and feature irregular black spots on the sides. Black crappie tend to prefer non-turbid waters, leaving them a smaller distribution across the state. This concludes the Centrarchidae family. We will begin with one of the more common catfish, the channel catfish. All catfish feature barbels or whiskers. The channel cat features a deeply forked caudal fin and a free adipose fin. Channel catfish generally appear more silvery when small and more battleship gray as they grow. Some may even take on an iridescent pink hue. Some, but not all channel catfish will feature random spots on the sides. The anal fin of the channel catfish is long and rounded. Another feature of the channel catfish is the upper jaw protrudes over the lower jaw. Channel catfish are quite tolerant and can be found in a wide variety of habitats across the state. Next up is the flathead catfish. This fish has quite a distinct mottled coloration throughout most stages of life. While they also feature a free adipose fin, their caudal fin is squared and not forked. As its name implies, the head between the eyes is flattened and the lower jaw projects beyond the upper jaw. While small individuals are featured here, Flathead catfish can reach lengths of 3 to 4 feet and weigh more than 100 pounds. Naturally a riverine species, flathead catfish can be found in streams and rivers and also in the reservoirs of impounded rivers. The yellow bullhead is commonly found across Oklahoma. Like the flathead catfish, yellow bullheads have a free adipose fin and a straight or slightly rounded caudal fin. The anal fin base is also long. The most important feature to remember about the yellow bullhead is the color of the barbels found on the chin. Yellow bullheads will have yellow or light colored barbels. The black bullhead is also commonly found across Oklahoma. Like the yellow bullheads, black bullheads have a free adipose fin and a straight or slightly rounded caudal fin. However, the anal fin base on black bullheads is short. The most important feature to remember about the black bullhead is the color of the barbels found on the chin. Black bullheads will have black or dark colored barbels.
While Oklahoma is home to several species of mad toms, today we are going to look at one of the most commonly encountered, the slender mad tom. While its distribution is not widespread, they can be readily found within their range. Often mistaken for baby catfish, mad toms are small. The slender mad tom reaches an average of 3 to 5 inches as adults. Mad toms are also distinguished by adipose fins that are not free, but are connected to the caudal fin. Slender mad toms can be distinguished by having dark or black fin margins. This concludes our look into catfish. We now move into the sucker family. Often overlooked as rough fish, this diverse group is almost exclusively found in North America and regionally important in the Ozark region where local festivals focus on harvesting and eating these fish. The first sucker we will look at is the river carp sucker. This fish has a widespread distribution in Oklahoma. River carp suckers have a silvery appearance with whitish lower fins. This fish also has a long, sickle-shaped dorsal fin and a nipple-like projection in the center of the lower lip. This fish is most often confused with the smallmouth buffalo, which we will look at next. The smallmouth buffalo is similar to the river carp sucker with a long, sickle-like dorsal fin and overall similar body shape and size. One of the biggest differences is the eye. The smallmouth buffalo will have a dark, almost doll-like eye. When looking at the lips, the smallmouth buffalo will not have a nipple-like projection on the lower lip. These fish often display a beautiful blue or pink iridescent hue. Next is the spotted sucker. This fish is very unique and difficult to confuse with other suckers. The most important feature to note is the black spot at the base of each scale. Spotted suckers are sensitive to pollution and habitat degradation, especially erosion that adds to turbidity and adds silt over substrates. The final member of the sucker family we will look at today is the northern hog sucker. Like the spotted sucker, this fish is quite unique. The head between the eyes is concave and the eyes are very close to the top of the head. They also have dark crossbars on the body, usually four. This coloration allows them to camouflage the stream bed of Ozark streams they call home. The Cyprinidae family is very large and diverse. Because many of the species in this family are small and relatively difficult to identify in the field without training, we will only cover a few common species in depth. The first member we will look at is the common carp. This Eurasian native was introduced to waters across the United States in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Common carp can be distinguished by their relatively large sized scales. They also have serrated spines in the first ray of both the dorsal and anal fins. They have a sucker like mouth with no teeth and barbels on each side. When small, common carp can have an almost silvery appearance, but as they reach larger sizes, can appear more olive to gold with red orange fins. Red shiners are perhaps the most common fish in Oklahoma. While female specimens can be more difficult for untrained individuals to recognize, 
the breeding males are quite distinct. The bright red-orange fins stand out immediately when encountering this fish. Breeding males also have iridescent blue-purple sides. Breeding males may also display breeding tubercles, which are small raised structures typically located on the head. One of the other commonly encountered fish in this family is the central stone roller. Perhaps the most distinct feature of this fish is the U-shaped mouth with cartilaginous lower lip. The hard lip allows them to scrape algae from rocks. Due to this algae diet, the belly of the central stone roller is very soft. Individuals typically have a dark olive color on the back fading to silver on the belly and will display dark spots where scales are missing. Breeding males will darken in color and have an almost rust colored belly with orange and black bands on the dorsal fin. As previously mentioned, this family is very diverse, with many individuals difficult to identify in the field. However, it is important to at least mention a few more members. This first group is almost exclusively found in the Ozark and Arbuckle regions, where gravel bottom streams with cold water springs and high gradients are common. The Cardinal Shiner is known for its bright red belly and powder blue nose in breeding males. It is a joy to find this fish as it is one of the most intolerant species in our state. In Oklahoma encompasses more than 25% of this fish's total range. The southern red belly dace has extremely small scales that give this fish an almost smooth appearance and feel. Breeding males will have bright yellow fins and red bellies. These fish are almost exclusive to small headwater streams. The red spot chub is one of the larger members of the family. They have an extremely unique red spot located behind the eye in adults. This fish is only found in four states, with the bulk of the population occurring in Oklahoma. This next group are some that are a little more difficult to identify in the field, but are common within their ranges. First up, the sand shiner. This small silvery fish will only reach a maximum of about three inches in length. You should find a dark line on the dorsal side widening to a wedge just before the dorsal fin. Another key characteristic is dashes along the scales of the lateral line. Next up is the big eye shiner, which as its name implies, has a relatively large eye. It also has a distinctive lateral band that extends around the snout. Lastly, the golden shiner, whose most distinct characteristic is the scaleless keel between the pelvic and anal fins. Golden shiners are commonly used by anglers as bait. We will only cover one member of this family, the gizzard shad. Gizzard shad are a silvery fish that can reach lengths of up to 20 inches. You can tell this fish apart from its cousin, the threadfin shad, by looking at the snout. Gizzard shad will have a blunt snout overhanging a subterminal mouth. Shad also have an extended ray on their dorsal fin. Gizzard shad are an important forage fish for piscivorous game fish, but only of lengths of up to three to four inches. This next group of fish is very unique. They are primitive fish 
that date back to the Cretaceous period some 65 to 100 million years ago. Gars have elongated bodies that are heavily armored with ganoid scales and elongated jaws filled with long, sharp teeth. They also have specialized swim bladders, which allow them to gulp air and live in poorly oxygenated backwaters. Oklahoma is home to four species of gar. Today we will exclude the alligator gar, as it is not commonly encountered in stream habitats. First, we will look at the spotted gar, who are heavily spotted across the body and will always feature spots on top of the snout. Next is the long-nose gar. It may be possible to confuse the spotted and long-nose gar as the latter also has spots on the body. However, the long-nose gar will not have spots on top of the snout and the snout should also be longer and thinner. The short nose gar may also have a few spots on the fin and body, but will not have spots on top of the snout. The snout of the short nose gar should also be more broad and short. Persidae is another diverse group that includes walleye, sauger, yellow perch, and darters. Darters are known for their bright breeding colors. They are typically small in size, reaching only a few inches in length as adults. Orange throat darters are perhaps the most common in Oklahoma, with a bright orange throat and alternating blue and orange bands on the sides. Redfin darters are similarly colored, but have bright red spots on the side instead of stripes. And as its name implies, the slenderhead darter has a pointed snout with black blotches along the sides. Fantail darters are unique in their breeding behavior. Instead of having bright breeding coloration, the male fantail darter produces an egg mimic that will look like an orange yellow blob on the spinous dorsal fin. The log perch is one of the largest darters. It has a pointed snout like the slender head darter, but also has tiger like stripes along the sides. Freshwater drum are a silvery fish with a long dorsal fin. They have a very high arching back with a strong lateral line. Perhaps their most distinctive characteristic is the diamond-shaped caudal fin. Freshwater drum have a wide distribution across Oklahoma. The banded sculpin is found in the Ozark region of Oklahoma. Everything about this fish is customized for life at the bottom of an Ozark stream. From its dark crossbars, allowing it to camouflage with the gravel beds, to eyes positioned on top of the head so sculpins can watch for predators approaching from above, and large pectoral fins to help maintain a benthic position in heavy flow. They also have large mouths, allowing them to eat prey as large as they are. Next, we will go over a few other fish that are important to note, but belong to several different families. These all happen to be often found feeding at or near the water surface. We will start with the black striped top minnow. The black striped top minnow gets its name from the horizontal black stripe that runs the length of the body along its sides. The fish has a small mouth that turns slightly upward to feed on insects and insect larvae near the surface. Next is the plains killifish. Plains killifish can be easily recognized. The most obvious characteristic is a dark vertical barring 
that contrasts with the light tan side of the fish. These fish are known for their tolerance of high water temperatures and salinity conditions. Lastly, we have the brook silverside. The brook silverside is a slender, translucent fish with a silvery lateral band along the sides. Silversides have two dorsal fins and long, pointed, beak-like snouts. These will be the last two fish of today's presentation. The mosquito fish is Oklahoma's only native live bear. This fish can also be found at or near the surface, feeding on invertebrates, including mosquito larvae. And we couldn't talk about fish in Oklahoma without mentioning Oklahoma state fish, the white bass. Although native to Oklahoma, White bass were not found in great numbers until large reservoirs were constructed. Now they are found statewide. An estimated one and a half million pounds of white bass are harvested annually from Oklahoma waters by sport fishermen. Thank you for joining us for today's fish presentation.